Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about the make tools. Make config, make auto make, auto config, or auto remake, AC local, and all those good scripts you use in order to build packages in Linux. So let's just r jump right in and look at the screen here. First off, we have a little program that we want to build. The first program is this hello.c. It's a very simple C program that we want to build. And with AutoMake and with AutoConf and so on, you can build a lot of different programs. It could be Python programs, could be C++ program, uh, C++ program or C Sharp or whatever. Uh, this is just a way of running different scripts and making a process that makes it easy to recreate a pro, uh, package on different systems so it can be portable. So make is a way to look at your system and see what is actually required for this install package to happen and where can I find all the dependencies. Because when you're building something in a Linux system, you usually have a li different libraries and so on that is required to actually build a specific package. And this auto tooling can help you to find all the different pieces that are required for the build process. So to set this up, we need a configuration script. And there is actually a configuration script that configures how to build the configuration script. So this is called configure AC as in auto conf. And to initialize this, we need an AC in it. So an auto config init. And this is written in a, a program called M4. I did a write up on that in school, I believe, so I have some knowledge about it, but it's so old, so I can't really say that I know a lot about M4. But this AC init is an invocation of a specific function, and it takes three parameters. First one is the name of the program. Let's call this hello, as it's a hello world program. Then it needs a version, so let's do 0.1. And last but not least, it needs an author email. So let's do Daniel test se just to have some email. And then we want to use auto make as well. And we can actually initialize that by just saying auto make init auto make. So that is everything we need to actually initialize auto make in this process. Then we want to build a program in C, so we need to initialize that as well. So we say uh, autoconfig uh, prog cc, so that is to add the uh, GCC compiler to build C programs. You can actually type cpp here for C++ programs, if you like. And then we can do ac config files, so we need some configuration files. And what we want to build from this process is a make file. So that is one of the configuration files that we need. And we also want to package into our uh, build and in the distribution. And the last command we want to run in this script is the command that actually does the output that creates the different files in this project, and that is called AC uh, output. So now we have built a script that goes through and initialize autoconf, initialize automake, it sets up the C compiler and the configuration files that are required for this build. So now we have done that file. The next file we need is a file called uh, makefile.am. So that's the configuration file for automake to actually create a makefile. And in this, we need first off to, let's first off set what kind of binary we want to build. So bin programs, and this is, uh, Programs is actually what we want to build. We want to build some programs and then we have a name before and we call that bin. 
And this binary we want to build is hello world. And then we want hello world in turn to have some sources. So we can actually tell it what is required to build this. And that is hello.c. So that's the two commands that are required to get this script running. We say what we want to build and what the sources are. We could add more sources here. We could add different dependencies to other projects and their header files, for instance. But I will leave it here just because this is a very simple example of how to do this. And I also want to add a little bit of a clean uh, process here. And this I just copied from uh, Clato at the Hacker Public Radio. We did a run through of this as well. And he added some uh, simple scripts to remove things that will be generated by the different commands. So if you want to commit this in with git into a repository, it's good to clean it up so you just have what's required for the build. So it will create some configure status and configure script and the configure log, those we want to remove. It will create the make file, we want to remove that. It will create a cache directory what, that we want to remove. We also want to remove the AC local M4 script as it's just uh, created. It also will create a compile, install sh, missing and make in file. So those are files that we are not required to have in our build. So we will remove those when we clean. So now we have actually set up everything that is required for this build. Then we need to run a lot of different commands. And there is a, a lot of them that you can run. So first off we have AC local. And this script will go through and look at your system what is actually installed and what can I use and set up some environment. Then we can run auto header if that is required and that will go through header files and look for dependencies and so on. But we haven't actually added a header configuration in our configure script so it will not do anything at the moment. We then can run auto conf to go through the system and actually create our configure script. So now we have that. Then we need to actually do something with our make file. So we run auto make and that will go through and look what is in, in the directory and add what is missing. And we see here that there is a lot of different things missing and it will actually not continue until the, these are cleared. And some of them we can create because they are very easily created. First off, we have an install script that is instructions on how to install this. So we will just touch that file so it exists. Then we have the news file and that's news about this project. Can I actually touch that as well? because we don't need actually to have that for this very simple example. We have a readme where someone can read more about this project, also required for this, but we just touched that file as well. Last, we, uh, next up we have the authors, and that's where we type in who actually built this program. So uh, everybody knows who the author are, and if they have any problems, they can contact them and actually get help if needed. And then last but not least we have changelog. And that's a file that actually says what has changed in this process. If we run auto make again we will see that we still have a lot of errors but all these can be created by add missing. We have the compile script, we don't need to create that. Install script, we don't need to create that as well. We can if we want to send that to the system. Then we have the missing, I don't know really what that is, if it's what's missing in the build. Uh, copying is actually a copyright statement and we will use the GNU statement that is linked from the system and depcomp I don't really know. So let's run automake with add missing and it will actually create links for all of these. 
So if we look now, we have these linked in from different uh, places. If we look at depth comp, uh, so this is some script I, it looks like. I'm not sure if we less that file instead. Uh, so this script uh, compiles a program generating dependencies as a side effect. Okay, so this is compiler for dependencies. That could be good to have. And if we less the copying statement, it's the GNU general public license. And if you actually want to use this, you should make a copy of it and change the last statement in the program to actually say who's built this, what it is, is it called and so on. But we are not required to do that at the moment because this is just an example and we are not going to publish this pro uh, package. So now we have actually set up everything in this program so I can run configure and that will go through, see where the C compiler is and it will also see what different things can be made. Can it actually create binaries? Can, has it all the variables set up so it will work when it actually builds this? And it went through and created a make file. So by then I can run make. That goes through and you see it actually creates very large <laughs> command line where it builds this program with a lot of parameters to actually make it build uh, correctly on all systems and then we can run hello world and we see that our program works we can also run make dist and this will create a distribution for us so this will create this tar gzip and if we make a little bit of a test directory here we will move this hello uh, distribution into test and in the test directory i will unpackage this hello script we go in there we can actually run configure and when it's done run make and it will have made the same program and you can actually copy this over to any other computer that runs Linux and it should be able to build this program as long as the dependencies are met so that is really powerful and if we now I will remove this test directory here and I will run make clean the script that we set up earlier it will actually remove everything that is not needed and you see that this authors changelog install readme and copying and so on they stay there because they are needed by the install process but the other things aren't and you, I ran a lot of different programs here to actually set this up. AC local, auto config, auto header, and auto make. But there is actually a command called auto reconf that will run all these, plus a command called lib to lice and auto point to actually do all these things. So we can actually just run one command and it will set up everything for us. And when this has run through, uh, it says that it still are uh, missing some files. So let's run auto make uh, add missing. I wonder if we can run add missing on this one. No, nope, it doesn't know that option. But when we've done that, we can run configure and we can run make and we still have our hello world program here. So that was a faster way to run all of these programs and get it set up from a repository where you don't have a distribution of something, you just have the actual code. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I have a series where I build Linux from scratch where I go through a lot of different packages and we do a lot of this process of building different packages. But I thought it was interesting to actually see how these packages are set up and how you configure the different tools required to build distributable packages on Linux. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. 
And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.